All right, welcome everybody back to another episode of Robin Restein Alive. I'm your host, John. Robin will be with us in a moment, the star of the show. Um, thanks for joining us. I, a couple things right off the top, and they're very important uh, obvious to us. Um, two things. First off, there was a tragedy. Um, young man, 21 years old. His name is Jordan um, Chu. There he is. Um, our good friend, very good friend, Kay, Kayla, um, had reached out to us and, 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 you know, just let us know what had happened. And, um, and then seeing this, you know, we decided we should put it up here and share and share as much as we can. Um, a young man passed away 21 years old. So obviously the family's devastated. They need help. Um, you know, no one has money around here as much anymore at all. And you need help with uh, funeral costs and, and things like that. So please, please, there's a GoFundMe. Um, you can find, we're going to put the link up. Um, if not during this show, if we can, I'll do it during this show. I got to figure out if I can put it in the message board. I might be able to. If not, definitely after. It's on our pages too. It's on Robin's and mine and Noel's and... Uh, citizens united page so please go there if you have anything you can do to donate that would be great if you can't because we know how tight money is all of us know that share it even just sharing it will help bring some awareness to help the uh the, this family young man 21 years old passed away um jordan chu and like i said it's a really you know Kay, uh kayla good friend of our shows and um so it'd be really nice if if you can go and see if there's anything you can at all donate to the cause of this um that would be great if not sharing sharing's free so just share it and that would be that would be great um another situation we have is our friend that we just recently met gabriella manorino who told her story last night of how she was um you know abused as a child at 13 years old she's her mother is they also have a gofundme for her her mother needs um needs help she is got copd she's just not really in good health um needs some surgeries you you can read it on the gofundme page um but gabriella's mom needs help so if you would similar to like i said for the the for Jor you know the jordan chu the young man who passed away even if you can't afford to give anything to the gofundme just sharing it would be greatly appreciated you just share these things it gets out there. And even if it gets seen by 20 people, one out of 20 just does something. You never know. And if everyone shares and it goes all around and um, that's what we need. So I have two of these right now that are very important. Um, Gabriella Manorino, who we met last night, her mom needs help. Um, so there's that GoFundMe. And then, of course, this young man, uh, Jordan Chu, passed away, only 21 years old. You'll read the story, you know, when you go to the GoFundMe. Very, very sad. And uh, the family needs help with funeral costs because it's so expensive. Funeral costs are almost are really outrageous when you uh, think about how yeah, and, and what a terrible time. And then you're you're putting up tens of thousands of dollars. So please go there if you can. If you can't put make a donation because we know money's tight. Just share it. Share it as much as you can. Um, let's go look in the comments. See who's all here. Ah, Kim's here. Hello, Kim. Chris Hi, Kim. is here. Hi, Chris. Don. Hi, Don. Scott Hi, Nassoy Scott. is too, and he says really sad news about Jordan, a great young man. Kay is with us. There's Kayla. Hi, Kay. Hi, Kay. Um, you guys all know Kay. Anyone that's been watching our shows for as long as you know, as long as we've been doing, especially Citizens United, it's been almost two and a half years now. Uh, Kayla is a great friend of ours, right, Robin? Yes. And um, oh, good evening to Dominic. Dominic Chianchetti's here. Hi, Dominic. Um, but let's see if we can do something to help. I'm going to put it up one more time, and then I'll be putting it up later on in the show, both of them. But there you go, Jordan Chu, please. If he passed 21 years old, very young. I mean, look great. Look at the kid. Um, it's really sad. So why don't we try to see if we can't? I, I Believe me, we all know how, how money is. It's tight for all of us. Just share it. Someone then out there will donate and help these people through the hardest times you could only imagine losing your son, your brother, your your best friend at that young age. 
and help them because funeral costs are crazy, aren't they, Robin? Oh my God. And they're really sad how they take it's all. I, it really kind of is annoying because they do take advantage of people at a horrible time. They absolutely do. Um, so yes, please help them. And then one last back to Gabriella Manorino, who we met last night and we've met before, obviously she makes those beautiful bracelets. Um, she also told her story last night about how she was hurt as a child. Um, her mom needs help. So please check out these two posts, these two GoFundMe pages. And if you can't do anything to share, sharing helps so much. We even learned that kind of in the, uh, in, um, why am I forgetting my friend? Elena. Elena DePaulo, right? Sharing, yep. sharing, sharing everywhere you can. Yep. Really helps. Um, yeah, here's Colleen. Uh, Hi, Colleen. Hey, Colleen. There's Elena's with us, too. Hi, hey, Elena. Elena. Um, Colleen is here. Noelle is here. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Noelle. Uh, I'm going to read what Colleen says, okay? Okay. She says, my heart breaks for Jordan's parents. No parent should have to bury their child. Mm. Um, Colleen Cameron's funeral was seventeen thousand dollars. Wow, outrageous! Um, and yes, hi, Colleen. John here is with us. Uh, Manzeri. Hi, John. Hey, John. Nice to see you. Um. So yeah, uh, geez, just a tough way to. You know, I, I can't even imagine. I mean, I remember, you know, Colleen's with us and, and, and Cameron and, and I don't know, 21 years old. These, these you know, and obviously Cameron was even younger and, and it's just, it's heartbreaking all the way around. It really is. I can't even, I, there's I, no words to even yeah, say. Yeah, it, I, it, it just, just leaves you speechless because you, it's something that, you know, a lot of things you can put yourself in somebody's position and understand. And I can imagine that you can't understand the depths of that hurt. Right. If you haven't been through it. I know. Yeah. I can only imagine who left a laughing face emoji on her on here. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty. Some asshole. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> And there's Kay. Yeah, you're right, Kay. We we try. We really try. Um, but these kind of things, I don't even know what to say. It, 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 it's it's overwhelming. And I and it's not overwhelming for me. I, I it, not for us. It's just the the thought. I mean, if and if you can't put yourself in there in people's shoes like that, you're really you really ought to go find out what you need to do to put yourself there. Right. That's that's tough. Tough stuff, man. Um so yeah, we'll keep on reminding everyone about these both these GoFundMe's um, because also, like I said, Gab Gabriel Manorino is somebody that we met last night who uh, uh, whose mom needs some help too, and and Gabrielle has been through a lot. Uh, Don says I can't even fathom what these parents are going through, and Kim says prayers for the young man and the family and friends. Absolutely. Um. Well, hey, you're with us now. I am. How you doing, Robin? Doing good. Did you like your new opening to the show? I loved it. Thank you. Yeah, it was pretty nice, right? Yeah. You gotta thank I'm, me. You made you chose it. Uh, yeah, but I'm impressed. Well, that's good, you put right? It together, yeah. Why? But I'm not capable. No, it would. It's just an impressive, nice opening. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Jennifer Lynn Park says prayers for the family. Also. Hi, Jennifer. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know. Oh, Colleen, you don't have to even ever thank us for anything. That was n nothing, absolutely nothing. That was, that was, I, you know, that, Robin, remember, that was the most, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. Like, it just, it just, it, it just, it's too much. It, it It's. You think about your, and this is what it is. If you've never had to deal with what these people are dealing with, think about your own. Oh my right. God. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. holy cow. You just can't even, I can't even fathom or imagine. Yeah. What must, and these people are so strong. Colleen and I, I know. everyone, they, they go through and they keep going. Colleen just keeps going. Mm-hmm. Gets and, up and, and got, goes and, to and work. Because and you have other, you got other daughter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. 
Anyhow, uh, let's move on to part of our show that we got going on. Um, last night, Citizens United. Yes. Um, with Noel and myself. And, of course, you're there, Gail, Jerry, everybody that's around. Um, we talked about a story that's a local one but became a national one. And I kind of want to play it for everyone again. Yes. Before we talk about it again. Yes, definitely. Um, I played this last night. But if you weren't with us last night, I'm going to play it again. It's um, the story pretty much of um, Katie Rifford. Um, it's about a two-minute video, two and a half minutes. Check it out. It's from Channel 4, but it gives you exactly, and then we'll talk a little more about it. After New York, during a heated custody battle, is back in town now to face charges. Katie Ryford was arraigned today on a felony charge of custodial interference and appeared in Niagara County Family Court for violating a court order. News 4's Luke Moretti has the latest. Are you guilty? No, I am not. Why I am, I am a domestic violence victim and my children are also victims of abuse. Katie Reifert talked exclusively with News 4 shortly after landing at the Buffalo Niagara International Airport. She says she's innocent and vows to produce evidence showing that Niagara County authorities failed her and her children. The truth's going to come out. The corruption's going to be exposed. Do you want to see your children again? Yes, I do. And I'm going to fight every single day until they return home. Niagara County Sheriff Michael Filicetti speaking to News 4 responded to Reifert's claims. These accusations of abuse and the truth will come out, the corruption, I don't know where all that is coming from. Um, I don't know what evidence of corruption uh, the Reifert family has. Um, if they're insinuating that it's me, uh, it's baseless. If they're insinu insinuating that the judge is somehow involved in corruption, you know, th this is just, to me, they're putting this out publicly to garner support for her cause. Ryford and her two children, Olivia and Mason, had been missing for three years. She vanished during a contentious custody battle with the children's father, Peter Dyer Bakerly of Massachusetts, who has denied any allegations of abuse. Ryford and the children were found earlier this month living in New Mexico, where she was taken into custody by U.S. Marshals. Please just follow the story, share it, and help me get justice for my children, Olivia and Mason. The children were reunited with their father, who has sole custody. There are orders of protection in place for both children that prohibit Ryford from seeing them. Attorney Randy Margolis, who represents the father, is asking the family court judge for additional restrictions. We don't know a lot of things that might have taken place during the past three plus years, so that's being considered and evaluated right now. So to be safe, my, my client believes that it would be in the best interests of the children to not have any contact, at least until things can be further determined. In addition to Reifert's family court appearance, she was arraigned on a felony custodial interference charge. Felicetti says due to bail reform, she was released on her own recognizance. Are you concerned at all? Is she a flight risk? I would say that, that there's definitely a, a concern that she would be a flight risk. Luke Moretti, News 4. All right, thank you uh, to Channel 4 for that. Uh, Noelle had said she stayed up late last night, so upset thinking about Katie and what the sheriff had said. And of course, it's baseless if it's about him. Um, Robin, your thoughts on the story? I mean, you, last night you didn't probably share as much, but. Yeah, I mean, my. The, the first thing I want to say is I was disgusted by Sheriff Filosetti's reaction. Um, the, the way he made it seem as if it was, you know, unfathomable that a judge could be involved in corruption. I mean, really, if he doesn't know that, that's it's kind of scary that he's not aware that that stuff like that happens all the time, and and it happens all the time in Niagara County. Yeah, all the time. Um, as far as the story itself, it's heartbreaking. As a mother, you can just imagine that you would do anything to protect your kids if you thought they were being hurt. And I don't know, it's just one of those stories that rings true to me that I just I just believe this mother. Yeah, let me read some comments as they have been coming in while you were talking. Um, 
Let's start here. Burdett says the sheriff should have never, ever made a statement like that. It does not look good. Don Rose, of course, they blame the mother and made the father look innocent. She wouldn't have took them kids away. And that's for if she wasn't protecting her children from something. Scott says the sheriff should look in the mirror and he will see all the corruption he needs. Uh, Noel says, did you read those fucked up messages from the ex? That alone shows abuse. Katie is here. Katie Rifford. Um, she says, he says the children were returned to the father. My children have only lived with me, their mother here in Niagara County, before being forced into hiding. Kay says it's all over, no longer a secret. Colleen says, I was shocked, two of the sheriff, Burdett, but never know until Evans is out, those poor kids. And Noel, the sheriff had no right to say anything like that. You know, here's the problem. Um, that I, my opinion, there was enough to show the abuse, right? There was pictures, there's video, there's the one video of her being stalked, right? That I have that I should have played. Mm -hmm. Um, there is enough to show that there's an issue, you know, yes. that there's something wrong here and that the, f and, and of course, you know how it works in this place, right? It's money. Yeah. And those with enough get. Well, well, look at it. Look at all the people that we are that we know that everybody's. Look mm -hmm. at the stuff with D'Angelo, the whole thing. Yeah. The the guy in Lewiston, Belter. Every it's all money. Right. And um. So yeah, there was more than enough. Hugh Master. Yeah. Right. Him. The night. The other guy. Money. It's all money. It's money and who you know, and then with who you know, here's the rest. You know. Yeah. So that that it, it, it and then. It's not even just who, yeah, right, who you know, yeah, yeah. there's the rest, yeah, right, for that. Um, but, like, the sheriff himself saying what he said, what, you would think, you would expect he would know a little, obviously, just on the whole uh, face of it, like, as far as a sheriff or a politician, whatever you want to, he is a politician, too. Right. Shocking that he would get so riled, say shit, something like that. Yes, I agree with you, though, for him to not know that corruption exists in our world, in our in our in our county, in our country, in our state is really kind of a little is, is a it, well, it explains a lot. Yeah. You know, because if you always believe that the justice system is right, no matter how no matter how it shakes out. Then we got a problem. Yeah. We have a real, real problem. Yeah, the justice system is letting Nick D'Angelo walk around and victimize more people. The justice system is letting Belter live his life, live his life in a beautiful home with just eight, years, just, just, you know, just what would you say? Just, yeah, like what's he got? Probation for eight yeah. years. Yeah, worst county in the U.S. You're right. Absolutely, mm -hmm. it is. Yep. Right. That's correct, too. Yeah. That came out, too, during, I remember, the election. When, yes. when he ran against Greer and all that. Yep. Um, so, yeah, this county is a joke. It's There's 200 and some thousand people in it. And Niagara Falls, as we've said a million times, is full of money. It really is. There's a lot of money here. Yeah. Not. I don't mean the people. I mean, you know, the state park, the casino, um, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of money at stake here. Right. And it's so easy. There's no one watching. Right. There's no one watching at and all. And the people who are watching are doing it too. Well, yeah. That's allegedly watching. Right. Um, the but yeah. The people that's why the bigger the cities, the bigger the county, the tougher it is. Right. There's just more people. Uh, Katie says, I went to a Niagara County detective in the DA's office multiple times trying to get help. And they called him a monster as they passed around all the evidence I have. There wow. you go. There you go. Yeah. I, I. But we know that, you know what? Look at that, though. What Katie says is exactly kind of what you know is going on in the D'Angelo case. Right. In, you know, I know they're two separate things, but it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. Because 
all the evidence, all the stuff. Hey, Bill, all the stuff. It, hey, Bill. It didn't matter, right? All of it right. doesn't matter. We know what D'Angelo's up to. We know about his fake accounts. We know about all of it. Right. They know that about all of it. he's contacting. And they even sent it right in the courtroom. Yes, just, recently. just again, yeah. And they let it go. Mm -hmm. Look at what she says. She brought it right in there. Right. And the judge didn't want to know nothing about it. No. The lobby or whatever the hell her name was. Right. Didn't get in care. Didn't think it was, you know, worthy, I guess, of letting people see the the abuse. Why? Right. They they tried to make her seem as though she's crazy. Well, listen to what he said. Yeah. Things weren't going her way, so she... All right. That's what he said, right? Things yeah. weren't going her way, so she... Whatever. Right. I don't know. Yeah, Nick's hacking his victim, his victim's accounts. He's he's out of control. Yeah, I mean he's just running wild. Yeah. That guy's literally just running wild. Oh yeah. I mean he's running around with pit, with purple shoes on and 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 like he's uh, you know, Michael Irvin. Yeah. And he's and he's Prince. and he's at the he's sitting he's going to court dates when it was cold. Remember when they were all virtual and he's sitting at a pool? Yes. With his shirt off. So they're really just mocking them. He's mocking them. Right. And they allow the mockery to happen. Oh, yeah. For some unknown reason. Mm -hmm. Same investigation they did for the public defenders. Yeah. yeah. So true. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, Robin. What? Um, but that story there, we can't let... You know what? It's, it's, I'm really glad that somehow no, that Noel and, and everyone got... You know, and Katie and them... Uh, that everyone... That this has come back in our... Um, area, right? You know, because we can just continue on this story forever until everything's either right or what or something, or until everyone knows, right? Oh yeah, this is something that we will keep bringing attention to. Katie says, "My daughter's therapist came to the court to try to speak to Delabio. That was the judge, because she was so concerned about my children, and Delabio refused to let her in the courtroom." Wow. Yep. There you go. Let's see. We keep on going here. Dominic, no law enforcement officer should ever make a comment on an ongoing case. You basically are saying an individual is guilty until proven not guilty. Law enforcement, you enforce. You are not the judge and jury. The sheriff should be held in contempt. Good point. Yeah. And it's funny. They'll gladly say that if you ask a question about some. If you ask a question of them, they'll say, oh, I can't. It's a, an ongoing oh, ongoing yeah. investigation. Please. Please. We can't speak. Yeah. Ongoing. Isn't that funny, though? How if their ass is on the line or it looks as though something's coming towards them, right. then they're, they'll gladly speak yes. to clear them. They, you know, to make sure. They rally around each other. Oh, uh, whenever these time. guys get in trouble. That's why it continues to happen is because everybody... Everybody is willing to just stand by and say nobody wants to get involved. Yep. Everybody would rather just stand by and know it's happening and not do anything to address it. John says the U.S. Justice Department came through here years ago and it's time again. Yeah. And then Noel says, but you ask about Nick D'Angelo, they say they, they can't comment because it's an ongoing investigation. Yep. And honestly, the investigation in that, how the hell is it still ongoing? Yeah, I know. They need to start selecting a jury, for God's sake. Right. You're still investigating now? Right, yeah. You already know. Noelle's done all the investigating. Yeah, she should be And gave paid. it to them. Yeah. Outrageous. Um, but anyways, <sighs> what a way to kick the show off. Yeah. I'm out of gas already. Might be it. Yeah, and I have well, to wrap it up. No, I'm not going to wrap it up. I'm just saying. Luck luckily, I'm prepared to speak from here. <laughs> Are you prepared? <laughs> You're prepared if I walk off? Uh, well, no, I, I would prefer if you didn't walk off, but if you run out of gas, I can keep it going for a little while if you hit the buttons. Noel says there is no more investigation. They're full of dog shit. Burdette says just imagine how many more victims they are with that sleazy D or D'Angelo. Yes. Um, But. Katie Rifford, I think the only way that this gets right is by the same way 
we've tried to do with D'Angelo. We've tried to do with everybody that's come our way. Right. Just constantly saying it, keeping, um, just keeping it alive. Right. Right. I mean, that's what you got to do. You just got to keep all this stuff alive. Keep the attention on it. Yeah. Because. They want it to die. I mean, Belter's a perfect example right. of when they let things die, then they, you know, then it's easy to just, to just do whatever you want to do. Right. I mean, the first D'Angelo case, when you think about it, though, because of it being a youthful offenders thing or whatever, had no attention. Right. You know what I mean? So it's easy then to just say know. he's a good Because when boy. there's one little article in the newspaper, everyone forgets it. Right. You know that. The news yes. is only as good as the 24 hours it's in. Mm -hmm. And then everyone forgets. Um, That's why. That that actually leads me perfectly into what I wanted to talk about next. What's that? Um, Should I go to commercial first? What time is it? It's about 626. Oh, yes. Maybe you should. That's why you're the host and I'm not. I decided to, let's see here. John is never out of gas. Well, I'm getting there, though. I, I Age is creeping in. Um, Noel tells Burdett, I'm, I'm concerned about his son. Scott says, I decided to flood the court with motions and objections for my case because D'Angelo was the ex's attorney. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 All right. Why don't we take a commercial break, regroup, reset here? Um and uh, let me try to find it. And we'll be back. I really hope I'm gonna. I'm on the right. I'm on the right page here, Rob. Oh God! All right, we'll be back in a moment. All right, we're back. Thank you for coming back with us. A um, couple comments before we get back to what Robin wanted to discuss. Um, Kay says, Nick shouldn't be out there. All of his victims are different in shape, size, color, eyes. He's like a maniac and has no control if they can't see that, plus the smirking and laughing post point, uh, postponing he's free as he please shows their concern. And that's what concerns me. Rape can lead to murder and just all around something that should be taken more seriously. Um, Noel says to Kay, exactly. He's going to hurt, kill someone if he hasn't already. Katie says, we need to fill these courtrooms up. When eyes are on them, the pressure is on them. Correct. Yes. yes. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, Jerry's with us. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. All right, Robin, you said you wanted to bring up something before we went to break. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. I, I mean, we get a lot of feedback on the shows and a lot of questions on why we constantly bring on survivors or why we constantly talk about survivors. Um, and I think last night's guest was a perfect example of, of why 
Um, Gabriella was with us last night, and she, if for anyone who didn't see Citizens United last night, um, Gabriella talked about uh, being raped as a 13 year old child by her stepfather. Now, most people would say, well, why do we need to hear that? Well, for one thing, it helps the victim to speak, to be able to tell their story, to not be embarrassment, embarrassed, to be able to, to speak on it publicly is to acknowledge it to yourself, to be able to say it out loud and have other people hear it makes such a world of difference. And I think it really helped Gabriella last night. Um, the other thing is other media outlets don't talk about it. And if we, just like with Katie's story, if we don't continue to talk about it, it's not going to be in the news, right? Nobody's going to be, if we don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. And other survivors out there start to feel alone when they don't hear other stories that might ring true to them. Right. Um, I know for me personally, the Me Too movement made a big difference. Um, just having other people out there and being so forward, having Noelle talking about her experience with D'Angelo helped me to be able to say, okay, there's somebody else out there who can relate to what I went through. And so when we don't put those people out there, the survivors don't have anyone to relate to and they keep it to themselves. And I mean, we all know the damage that causes. Um, yeah. Also, we've got to put these rapists on notice. We got to let them know that somebody's watching. Right. Yeah. Because they're allowed to run out the clock. We see that. We say it's not taken seriously. Right. We no. realize that. I think we now re we all realize that the judicial system does not take this crime seriously. No, it doesn't. Um, after watching what happened in Lewiston and what how, what the result was with uh, Belter. Right. And others. Yep. Yeah. They really show you that they don't take this seriously. This crime has been normalized through the years, unfortunately. It's really yes. sick. But it really has. It really has. Through and music, through... TV mm -hmm. through movies, this has been normalized. Yes, that it's this, and that includes pedophilia as too. Oh Not yeah, just rape, but really pedophilia. Most most that I have seen. There's because, songs on the radio that you can still hear today that talk about teachers with their students or yeah. young girl get out of my mind or yeah, there's sick stuff uh, like. But that's been going on in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, just making people think. It doesn't really mean anything. Hi, Teresa. Teresa's with us. Hi, Teresa. And it just like doesn't matter. So, it, it we've got a real problem. You saw with the with the New York State Child Victims Act was a great thing. They couldn't wait to make that. They could not wait for that to expire. Oh, they. Were. There was no chance of that ever coming back, and we were told that. Yeah. So that tells you, right? I mean. All right, let me read some of these comments, okay? Yes. Um, Noelle, and it also puts the spotlight on these predators, and hopefully people with common sense will avoid these predators so no more victims are made. Kim says, when you do bring survivors on, it does help with others do come forward and feel comfortable talking about what happened to them uh, without feeling ashamed. Kay says, the predators run campaigns, etc., lie about what where they live. Yeah. That is true. They do. Mm -hmm. They do their own. Oh, yeah. Dominic, Robin is so right. There should never be any shame in talking, men or women. Talking helps, shines the light, and I believe helps with the healing process. Yep, we've got more. Um, Don, couldn't have done it without Noelle, Robin, and John. Well, thanks, Don. Um, Noelle says, the only reason I came forward is because I knew I had support and people to relate to. And I didn't realize how many more victims there were until after I came out. Once a victim spreads, speaks, you usually find multiple more. Yeah. Yeah. Because these people are, are predators. And if they're preying on one person or one child, don't think that they're not going to do it to anyone they have the opportunity to do that to. Right. Yeah. No. I mean, it's um, we talked about this remember earlier about the whole the whole thing the, the 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 rape the the sexual assault the whole thing 
it's not, I don't know if you, it's not what people think. No. Because look at some of the people that you would sit back and say, oh my God, here's a guy, you know, whatever. You would think they got everything going for them. Right. Okay. Generally, it's, they're, they, they, I, it's amazing that they're doing what they're doing. It's right. what people would think, right? Right. But what's the reason? It's power. It's all, like I told you earlier, I really believe it is the need to be in complete control of someone else. Yeah, it's got it. Noel says predators deserve to be publicly blasted as much as murderers or anyone else on the news. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that tells you why it's normalized. Right. They will not do it. Right. They won't do it. They, and they're so scared to do it. And it's ridiculous. And you know what? Why is it that it goes away for the predators, but the victims are stuck with it for their whole lives? Yeah. Why is it okay that, you know, we plead down the predators or we just normalize it or, you know, however we justify it. And then meanwhile, we have victims out there who suffer for the rest of their lives, whose lives are never, ever the same again. How the yeah? How in the hell was it ever thought somewhere, whenever it was, that all right, child gets raped by an adult, and we'll give you you know what? If you can escape for the next 10, 15 years, you're good. Right. You're good. You're okay. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the knowing what you set it up as too, knowing what they set it up, it's a child. Right. So the chances of them talking are probably even less than an adult. Right. And all that. They're easily manipulated, obviously, easily scared, easily told, mm -hmm. I'll hurt somebody if anything could be yeah. said. Or, or you, like in my personal instance, you just don't know. You're a child. You don't realize right. that when it's happening to you, you don't know what's wrong. It took me 30 years to know that what happened wasn't just a relate. you know, like I thought it was wrong just because they were married, not because I was 12. Right. And Niagara County needs to be shooken out. There needs to be something needs to happen to shake these guys out because there's way too many of them. Yes. Because you know how many of them I know in my head that we can't say? Yes. Think oh, my God. It. Yes. Yep. Think about that. Yep. And you're right, Don. It becomes the norm. And they yep. have made it the norm. They have made it normal. Mm -hmm. They have made it to where... It's normal for a guy. This is what I'll never understand on my, my end of it. Cause I, not until I met you, Robin, did I ever personally know anyone? I don't believe I may have, I probably did. They just didn't say, right. I don't know how a guy you have your kids. If, if it isn't enough, just because you should know better just right. because, right. You have your own then. And you don't even, that doesn't even trigger it. No, like that's not even like, Oh yeah, I, my, my son and daughter here, they're, 12 right you get what i'm trying to say like yes. how doesn't that trigger in your mind like oh you know that whole thing of putting yourself in other people's shoes how don't you doesn't that it doesn't no i see guys doing it all the time and i think to myself you have daughters that are that age and you know you dumbass did you imagine it, when it happens to a child i think it sets an expectation of what a relationship is that just causes people to be in further abusive relationships. Like, I think it makes abuse the norm. So then, you know, when you're 19 years old and someone's 36, okay, now it's legal, but you're it's in a bad, yeah, it's still messed up. It's still or now you go into a relationship where somebody doesn't treat you properly and, and you think that's acceptable because that was the expectation that was set by being abused as a child. Yeah. It, Noel says, um, you're taught at a young age to respect your elders and not talk back and listen. So that's why the predators go for little kids. I, yeah. uh, Scott says, I work with a guy who constantly comments on young girls and he has three daughters. That's what I'm saying, Scott. Right. I don't get it. I don't get it. I know of a guy who was my age, a little bit older and said something about one of our daughters. Remember? Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, you have, what, what are you doing? Right. And then you got to kill him. Right. I mean, like what? 
I, I don't know how that doesn't. It, it's sick. Yeah, it's sick. It's it's it really is. I'm 51 years old. I mean, I I don't know. I I don't know. Think about this. Think about the 50 guy, 50 year old guys that run around with 19 year olds. Mm-hmm. And that's, it's you know all that's about pedo- that's a pedophile, right? It that truly is. is. That's, that's exactly a pedophile, what because that what's is. the big deal? And you 19, know what? 17, 16, and you know what? 22 and and 50 isn't okay either. No, it's really not. It's that's, a mess. That's that's pedophilia too. That that just you're just it's a mess. Right. You just haven't had the opportunity to find anybody under 18 yet when you're doing that, but you, you happily would. All right. Where are we headed now? Well, I've got some national stuff to talk about. Do you think anyone wants to talk about that? I don't know. Let's <laughs> tell me in the message board. Does anybody want to talk about? Hold on. We got something here. Hold All right. Good. Dave's got something. Sexual assault messed with her head so much. There's many phases and usually often later do no, I mean, it's so hard to read sometimes. Do they realize it was wrong and that's when they come forward, but victim shaming ruins it for their newly found voice. I'll never understand how someone can tell someone how to feel or that didn't happen. Yeah. Well said there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot of people out there that like to say, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, the victim shaming is unreal that goes on. And the proof and evidence people. Well, they're idiots. Those and... are idiots. Those are those are idiots. Those people are idiots because they're acting as though they don't want to understand that this crime is different than them than someone robbing your garage. Right. Or breaking into your house. Right. Or even murder. Right. It's a completely di- there. You can't say that with this. Right. You're just a jackass and a moron. And you know what I'm saying? Like don't tell me or anyone else how to feel or how to cope with something that you haven't been through. Right. Oh yeah. That's always and and that could be in anything. Right. That's yeah, what, right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. It definitely. Hold on. A minute. Let me see what uh, Scott has. Uh, my ex cousin was 45 and dating a 19 year old. And the whole family was okay with it. My stepdaughter was disgusted because the girl was in her class. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, Noel, very rare that anyone ever gets proof and evidence of rape. Yeah. Right. And you know what else is thick about that, too? And I was thinking about this last night. And even then when they do, for some reason, the evidence gets missing. Right. Or it costs $500 to get the evidence or yeah. whatever crazy it is. Yeah. It is set up in a way to make sure if these people do it, Think about it. They don't want to. They're very concerned about their wallets. Oh, yeah. They're very concerned about their ability to do whatever they're going to do afterwards. Have you ever noticed that? Yes. Very strange mm-hmm. that they're very concerned about their and money. You know what? That in itself tells you what a fucked up situation it is because they should be worrying about criminal charges, but they know full well that they'll get out. They're just worried about how much is it going to cost me. Yeah. How right. much that's is all, it going to cost? Oh, that's it. Yeah. What do I have to plead to? Think of the justice system, though, in its in its entirety. Um, think of the justice system in its entirety. I don't care what it is. The victim. Think about that. They never have anything but the state representing them in a way. Right. Or at least trying to, um, what would you say, like the, uh, to convict the criminal, whatever. But there's no one really ever, there's no lawyer for the victim right? that comes forward and is able to cross-examine anyone. No. It's the state, which is a problem, because the state is political, right? All those people are politically appointed, or whether they're elected themselves or politically, that is a mess. We have intertwined the political system with the judicial system for, I mean, this is for I mean, decades, and it's a mess. Yes. Because the political system is corrupt on its own just because of what it is right. it was cre- it was corrupted 200 years ago if you listen to what john adams and the other guy said george washington right remember when they, what about, they predicted yeah political about parties. the parties getting too big and then and then men that are going to just it's exactly happening right now right and then you've got those people running the judicial system yeah it's the, i'm waiting for, for pigeon when will pigeon the biggest political operative of our time here in Western New York. When is he? 
going to be brought up on charges uh, on trial for that nine year old. Right. That made that claim. All right, Katie. My abuser admitted to taking advantage of me in a text, and the assistant DA told me if they brought the case to trial against my abuser, the jury would consist of old white men farmers who know nothing about domestic violence. Literally what she told me. Wow. The more you hear this stuff, the more you know the people that they try to make out to be crazy aren't. Right. You see what I mean? Yes. I don't know nothing about the corruption, Felicetti said. Yeah. You know a lot about the corruption. You know exactly about the corruption. Mm -hmm. They tried to bring the corruption out when he ran. And it got squashed. Right. Think about what she just said there. I know. My abuser admitted to taking advantage of me. In a text, and the assistant DA told me if they brought the case to trial against my abuser, the jury would consist of old white men farmers who know nothing about domestic violence. Wow. Wow. Noelle. Yes, Katie. I seen that text. I think I did too. Um, that was so disturbing that that text alone shows your baby shouldn't be anywhere near Peter. Dominic Cianchetti. What is sad? is that when this stuff happens, even if you tell right away, the courts are so messed up, by the time the evidence goes stale, and then you have a group of lawyers arguing hearsay, which is messed up, very messed up. Yes. The judicial system is not set up. Well, it's set up for those with the money. It's simple. I think I can't, I can't in my opinion, I can't say it any more simpler. Right. It's the money. It's mm -hmm. those with the money. Now, if you happen to be in a family, well, like maybe a fossil family or something, and this someone in that family is a constant tr problem, they will always get out of trouble. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, some at some point, it might get too much where you have to cut bait on them, but you get my point? Yeah. So it's, it, it's just not working. The, the, it doesn't work. The system doesn't work. It, it's bro. It's so not broken because they did it on purpose, but it, it's it's... It's it's just bad. It's bad all the way around. Yeah. You have people more concerned and more over if someone were to break in their house and steal their TV. Oh, than yeah. Than if someone were to be raped. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Mm -hmm. And especially if it does. Cause and you've heard is, it. This is the other thing. People think that if it's not like at gunpoint or, oh, yeah. uh, you know, getting punched in the face and dragged into the alley. Which doesn't happen off. Right by a stranger that it's not rape. And I'm going to tell you that most of the time it's not violent in that way. Most of the time it is somebody, you know, most of the time, you know, it, it's going to fit into those circumstances. We've talked to so many, not on here, but I know you have, and I've, you've told me a lot of times these pe people are just, I mean, what are you gonna, they, they almost, they freeze. Yeah. They're, out of, they're not even, yeah. How many times we talked to somebody that said they know how many tiles are on the ceiling? Right. From be because the, come on, it's disgusting. It's just freaking disgusting. Um. Well, hate when they when they want to bring victims' mental health into things. Whose mental health would e even be okay after something like that? And even if they weren't mentally okay, that shouldn't show should show you the predator more. Predator is more of a danger for taking advantage of someone who's mentally unstable. Right. It shouldn't. Here's the thing, too, about this. And I learned this at a, at a young age. Um, it doesn't matter. Like that whole. Remember the whole the whole no means no thing. Right. That's true. Right. It's supposed to. That's supposed to be true. Yeah. I don't care what anyone is. Right. It doesn't matter what they are, where they are, who they are, what they're doing. They're not. It's not open season. Right on them right it's just not but it is it and, is open season sadly and and you know what I, I think it's more than even just just no i think you've got to know that you have the person's consent like just because they're not like no 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 doesn't mean that their consent you know what i mean sometimes you're in a situation where you can't do that or like you said you freeze or you know 
I just think a lot of times these predators take advantage of things like that and use those things. Yeah. All right. Well, Robin, we are mentally stable or not. That person still was taken advantage of, and it made it easier for the predator to do because of their mental health. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, these it's, it's amazing though. Like you say, Noel, they're going to bring that up as if that's some sort of, Ah, see, you know what I mean? Like some sort of thing. I don't care if the person could be, that's the thing. You could be drunk. You could be high. You could be right. I don't care what, what you are. Right. You're running around naked. It does not matter. No, you're not a lot. That does not, it doesn't matter if not you're open husband season. or wife. Yeah. Your husband or wife. It doesn't matter. Or girlfriend it doesn't. And some of these motherfuckers don't get it. No, a they lot of don't. them. No, oh, yeah. The majority, probably. Yeah. Out of, out of 10, nine out of 10. Yeah. Don't get it. Right. Just by listening to what they say. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, why don't we... I don't think you're going to get to... Na- I don't think you're going to get to any national stuff. Today. That's all right. Nobody really wanted to hear about the primaries anyway. No. Although, I will no, say this. What, no, one thing I will say, there is some interesting stuff happening. There is. Uh, here, let me, let me play something real quick. Let me, let me play something real quick. Watch this guy real fast. Real fast. Guys, just watch. In 46 year history. There has never been an individual who is a greater threat to our republic than Donald Trump. He tried to steal the last election using lies and violence to keep himself in power after the voters had rejected him. He is a coward. A real man wouldn't lie to his supporters. He lost his election and he lost big. I know it, he knows it, and deep down, I think most Republicans know it. Lynn and I are so proud of Liz for standing up for the truth, doing what's right, honoring her oath to the Constitution, when so many in our party are too scared to do so. Liz is fearless. She never backs down from a fight. There is nothing more important she will ever do than lead the effort to make sure Donald Trump is never again near the Oval Office. And she will succeed. I am Dick Cheney. I proudly voted for my daughter. I hope you will too. There is former Vice President Dick Cheney with under George W. Bush. Um, I'm going to make a quick comment on him. Yeah, and then I have Oh, some. go ahead. You go ahead. Uh, go ahead. The thing that stuck out to me in this whole thing was when he says a real man wouldn't lie to his supporters. Oh. This motherfucker lied to the whole country about weapons of mass destruction and took us to war. Endless war. Endless war. Yeah. And he's going to say... No, listen, I'm not sticking up for for President Trump. Well, I could care less about him at, it, this, at it, this point. It, he could be talking about Donald Duck for all I yeah. care. The fact that he had the nerve to call someone else a coward and say that about yeah. lying. He truly perpetrated one of the most in in, in modern American history. Really. The yeah. biggest lie. And some people called him out on it, but not enough. When 9-11 happens, he heads to Iraq. Right. It just doesn't come on enough. We know. I mean, and, and I'm sure he's going after and I care less. I'm sure he's going after Trump because of what Trump had said. Right. In the past about this. Right. Those guys were from Saudi Arabia. Right. Right. That blew us up. Yes. Simple as that. He that is a joke. And. um I'm surprised his daughter would even want, eh, whatever. But I, I, he just had to be seen. He hasn't been seen yeah. in a long time. Let me read this real quick from Don Rose, okay? She's talking to Katie. I'm so sorry you had to, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Sadly, this happens more often than not, and abused women are left with no support from the legal system to help them. Scott says, did I hear right? That they are shutting the 9-11 Museum down due to funding? Ooh, I don't know. Good one. I don't know about that. Well, I don't, Kim yeah. says they should just leave Trump alone. They are trying to set him up so he cannot be president. Trump has done so much for the country than Biden will ever do. This is my opinion. Okay? And I agree. Hey, you know what? The, the, when I saw Cheney, though, like you said, he could have been talking about any That, that guy, it's a lot of balls to get on there. Mm-hmm. That would be like that other guy, Colin Powell. He came out and did what he did right there in front of that security council, the U.S. Right. and all that. And the problem is when you look back and you see all the people that died. I mean, it's 
right it's and not all okay who, who were wounded yeah, and it's not okay have ptsd and and you had it almost reminds me of what we were just talking about when with a funeral you're at your worst part of your life and now they're coming at you saying we need ten thousand dollars seventeen thousand dollars you know what i mean right that, he knew we were at that point. Like in our country, it was all right. shook up. Oh, 9 11, my God. Everyone was ready to do anything. Right. He knew. Mm hmm. Uh, real quick, Noel, that's like Nick D'Angelo going on the Niagara action talking about pedophiles. Yeah. Yeah. That is sick. Right, Noel? That is just so sick. <laughs> Teresa says a, a guy named, what'd she say there? A guy named Dick and Colin. No more to be said. <laughs> That's that video reminds me. Of, yeah, it is a lot like that. Didn't he shoot someone in the face for a hunting? Yes, he did. Dick Cheney did shoot his friend in the face accidentally with some like bird shot or the hell they call yeah. it. But yeah, shot him in the face though. Yeah, he sure did. Um, I just, I just know that that whole situation back in nine eleven. I mean, that's a whole show on itself. Oh my god, yes. Um, because and it's not so much who did what at nine eleven. It was our reaction to it. Right. And then that guy having. If you recall Blackwater and all that. Yep. Remember those names? The defense company, yeah. All hand. Halliburton. Halliburton, the whole thing. Yeah. We were supposed to have gas. He said we were going to have oil to the point where we didn't know what to do with oh, it. Oh, yeah. I can see yeah. the oil overflowing. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Ken Guthrie says, no one complains about the amount of money spent on Trump's impeachment hearing and no evidence. Waste of taxpayers' dollars. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. They've wasted so much money. Oh yeah. In our, I would, I went back to the old because we were talking sports the other day about the the what were they called the the Mitchell report with, yeah with the with the Senate when they were going after baseball players yes the hell business they have going after base what are they getting involved right they just wanted they just wanted to meet them yeah I thought really uh -huh. they truly just wanted to be a part of it yep and meet them guys yep. All right, let's get into what we got uh, coming up. All right, Robin? Yes. Um, today's Tuesday, so on uh, Friday, Gold Gutters yes. at 2 p.m., correct? Then Saturday. Gold Gutters is at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Why did I say? Oh, because I was thinking of uh, yeah. 6 p.m. Falls Count Anywhere. This week, Sergeant Slaughter, his daughter will be joining Chris DiCarlo and Charlie Turner to talk about her time and, and she does her own stuff now. She's like one of those ninja warriors. Yes. So we'll be talking to her about that, but also talking to her about her, you know, some stuff about Sergeant, Sergeant Slaughter, what it was like growing up in that time. Um, then of course, Monday we'll be back with uh, Citizens United with Noel and myself. Um, let's see here. Hold on. I'm getting messages. I can't read. Uh, let's go about our numbers, Robin. Yes. Since we're talking about all this, of course, the YWCA, 716-433-6714, that is the number for you to call if you have ever, ever in your life have been abused, hurt, let's say as a child or as an adult, whatever, you've been raped, you were sexually assaulted, please call the, the YWCA, 716-433-6714, and there is one in every state, every county in this country, we learned, yep. and in Canada, too. Yep. Um... Robin, you know how great the counselors are. You've dealt with them. And if you call that number right now, you'll probably get the counselor you deal with. Probably, yeah. She's right there waiting. Yep. And they will and they will set up a counseling um, schedule with you. So you could talk with them once a week, twice a week, whatever you need. Advocates, they're great. You dealt with them too. Remember yes. when you went to the police station? Mm -hmm. They came with you to make sure you felt comfortable. They'll go to the court. They'll go to the hospital. Yep. They'll go anywhere to, yep. make you feel like, to make you feel comfortable. They're amazing. I can't yeah. say enough about them. If you've ever been affected by sexual assault, whether it be you directly or whether you're trying to understand a yeah. loved one, um, go there. Yeah, please reach out to them. It's completely free, and I couldn't have, I couldn't, I wouldn't recommend them to people in that situation if I didn't truly believe they were the best. Human trafficking eight 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 three seven three seven eight eight eight. Um, that's countrywide. And if you see anything that you think looks like human trafficking, because it's such a big deal here in Niagara County and everywhere, every county in the United States, but really here in Niagara County, we have this problem. If you see something, call that number. It's completely anonymous. It isn't like you're making a false police report or something. Just give them a call. And what's it hurt? Because they'll check it out and there's nothing wrong. They just go about, everyone goes about their business. 888-373-7888. 
human trafficking, give them a call. Um, here's a number, and it's a – oh, I got to take the human trafficking thing down. Hold on. I don't want to cross up the other number. Here's a number that is a simple one, 988. Um, Robin, that is the uh, suicide and crisis lifeline. Yes. So that would be if anyone is at that point, right? Yes. Very right. important. Remember the number 988 in case yourself or a loved one is in need of it. Um, it's something that you should keep in your head. You never know who's going to be affected right. by these types of things. Um, it, it can happen to anyone at any time. So just make sure you, you, you keep that number 988 in your head. Yeah, definitely. And if you hear something, if someone says something, try to pay attention to them too, you know? Yeah. Sometimes people aren't joking. Um, back to this real quick before we go. Jordan Chu, 21 years old, passed away. You know, obviously very sad. Um, they need help. Um, you see how much it costs for a funeral. You heard what Colleen told us, sadly, in her situation, $17,000. So if you can, go to the GoFundMe page and maybe leave a little donation. If you can't do that because money is tight, just share it. Share it everywhere. Someone then will pick it up and do something with it or just keep sharing it. It's all you Sharing it helps so much. So please check out that GoFundMe page. We have another GoFundMe page. Our friend who we met just recently, Gabriella uh, Manorino, who came to our show yesterday and talked about her, her um, abuse that happened to her when she was 13 years old. Her mom needs help. Um, she needs, you can read, she needs emergency funds. She's, she's so, she's got C, COPD. There's a gallbladder issue. There's all kinds of stuff. Go there, please. If you can, anything would help, please go there and to that GoFundMe page. And if you can't, once again, share it, share them both, please. It's free to share. Just share the, share them all over the place. And uh, you can find them on all of our pages. pages yeah. um, mine, yours, Noel's. The Citizens United, United page. page. We'll be talking about these two on every um, every show. Yeah. All the shows are going to talk about the GoFundMe's. Just yeah, just oh. give them a share. I mean, like John said, if you can't, you know, if you can, obviously, if you can donate, the the families would be incredibly appreciative. Um, but if you can't and you want to do something, just hitting the share button makes a world of difference. One other thing that we got new, um, first of all, like us on Facebook, please. And we have a new YouTube. It's called Friends Media Network. And the Friends has a Z at the end, so it's Friends Media Network. You go there to YouTube. Please give us a – go there and subscribe. Um, you know, we, we're trying to get as many su subscribers as we can. All of our shows are going to be there starting now. Citizens United from last night is there. Um, I believe Gold Gutters from the week before is there, and now Robin's show will be there. So that is the place to go. Falls Fre Count Anywhere. Falls Count Anywhere. Friends Media Network um, is the place to go for on YouTube to see all of our shows. And please go there and give us a like, give us a subscription follow, and check us out. All right. I guess, Robin, it is time to go. Any final words for uh, the people? Just once again, if everybody can – Pay attention to those GoFundMe's and give them a quick share. Um, obviously, our condolences go out to Jordan Chu's family and our best wishes to Gabriella's mom. Um, and I just want to say that we have an incredibly good group of, of people um, that all help each other. And it, it's just really good to see. And I'm incredibly thankful for that and for everybody that watches. Well said. All right, guys. We will. Uh... See you next week with Robin's show on Tuesday. Take care, everyone. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, then click the like button below and the subscribe button to be notified when a new video is uploaded. Here are some of our other videos. Remember to leave a comment below.
Gusto. 